but you want to get started in 3d printing i know it can be very overwhelming at first but i guarantee you that by the end of this video you will have everything you need to get started in this very expensive hobby before we go any further what is 3d printing in simple terms it's the process of creating a three-dimensional object from a digital file a 3d printer adds material called filament layer by layer to form a desired object think of it like a glorified glue gun it is important to keep in mind that there are two types of 3D printers, FDM printers and resin printers. FDM stands for Fused Deposition Modeling. Don't worry if you have no idea what that means, it's just important to know what it does. It works by melting and extruding plastic filament layer by layer. It's great for larger objects and prototypes. On the other hand, resin printing uses a liquid resin that hardens when exposed to UV light. This method is perfect for high detailed miniatures or just smaller objects for around the house. In short, if you plan on building something for cosplays or you want to build bigger things for prototyping or engineering, I would recommend going with a FDM printer. Whereas if you want to build something like a chess set or smaller D&D figures, then I would go with something like a resin printer. Disclaimer! This video is only going to focus on FDM printers from here on out. So if you want to use resin printers, I would just recommend clicking off this video and going to find another tutorial. Alright guys, so now we're going to be picking your 3D printer. I know this can be a very daunting task at first as there's so many options out there in the market but don't worry just follow these steps i'm about to mention and you'll be able to pick the perfect printer for you so the first step in picking your printer is to determine your budget entry-level printers can cost anywhere from 100 dollars to 300 dollars some great examples of entry-level printers are the ender 3 from creality and the neptune 3 pro next up moving up a price bracket from around 300 dollars to 700 dollars in this category, you're gonna get a little bit more developed printers and high-tech printers. I have two very good recommendations for you guys. Number one being the Bamboo Lab A1. This printer is extremely reliable. And another great printer is the FL Sun V400. Now guys, if you really just have an infinite budget for your first 3D printer and you're just looking to go all out and spend all the money you have, I would definitely recommend the Bamboo Lab X1 Carb. If you really just want to spend a lot of money on your first 3D printer, this is the printer to spend it on. This is widely known as one of the most reliable printers out there and its features are unprecedented and compared to all the other 3D printers out there, it is definitely the top pick as of right now. Alright guys, so the next step in picking your 3D printer is to consider the build volume. Some printers have similar build volumes and other printers have completely different build volumes. Build volume is basically the area in which your printer can actually make things. So don't think that if you get a small printer, you won't be able to print something like, for example, a katana. You will just have to cut your 3D model into smaller pieces and prepare them to print. If you have no idea what I mean by this, don't worry, I will explain it later in the video. Just know that the size in which your printer can actually make things does not determine the size of the things you can build. Now guys, the final step in picking your 3D printer is to just keep in mind the community and the customer support around that printer. I'm just going to use an example. The Ender 3, which is right next to me, has an extraordinary community of people who have bought the printer, have had failures with it, have had setbacks with it, and who post about their experiences and tell people how they fix them. So this is a great printer to buy if you are looking for a community to belong with. They will teach you how to solve certain problems and how to get over certain obstacles with the printer because again not every printer is perfect and what i mean by customer support is whether or not the printer has good reviews and whether or not the customer support will actually reach out to you and help you if you have an issue creality as an example is a great source of customer service every time i have an issue and i reach out to creality they always respond back to me within a day and they will always send back emails and uh, spare parts if I need them completely for free. So that is a perfect example of a company with great customer support. I'd like to keep in mind that this video is not sponsored by Creality. I'm just speaking from my own personal experience. All right, guys, now we're going to go over 3D models and where to find them. We're also going to go over certain tools you can use to create your own 3D models. So once you have your 3D printer, you're actually going to need 3D models to print. There are plenty of resources out there that you can use to find free and paid for STLs. If you don't know what STL stands for, it means standard triangle language. And this is just the standard file form used for 3D printers when printing. It's basically just the file form in which your 3D model will be turned into. 
There are several places and websites where you can find free STLs. My top picks for finding free STLs are places like Thingiverse, My Mini Factory, and Cults 3D. Of course, links for these will be in the description below. Here, you'll be able to find everything you need for free STLs. Now guys, if you want to be a little bit more hands-on and create your own 3D models, there are several tools and resources you can use to do so. If you're just starting 3D modeling and 3D printing, my best recommendation to you is to first start out with Tinkercad. This website is very good to use, it's free to download, and it is extremely user-friendly. This is a great place to start if you're new to 3D modeling. I don't doubt that any of you will be able to pick it up. Just with a bit of practice, it will become extremely easy to you and you will be able to design some pretty cool things within the first day. Now guys, if you wanna step up your game and just kinda of go into the deep end of 3D modeling, I would recommend using Fusion 360. This is a very good website if you wanna get a little bit more serious about 3D modeling but not go fully into the deep end. This is a good in-between. It is a little bit complex to learn at the beginning, but I assure you over a few weeks of practice, you will definitely get the hang of it. And just keep in mind, it is a skill to learn. So it won't happen overnight. It's gonna take a bit of time and practice. All right, guys. So the holy grail of 3D modeling is, at least in my experience, SolidWorks. This application is, how do I say it? extremely hard to use um i don't say that to discourage you guys but i just want to let you guys know that it will definitely take time to learn how to use this application especially if you don't have any prior experience in 3d modeling i just want to let you guys know that you will have to pay for this application it does not come free i believe you have to pay either a monthly or yearly subscription but it is definitely worth the price the amount of features you get on this application is just phenomenal it is extremely intricate and you will, are able to fine tune every aspect of your 3d model all right guys now we're going to be moving on to a key software and a key term when 3d printing now this term and software is known as slicing slicing software like ultimaker cura which is the slicing software i use for all of my printers a link will be in the description below basically converts your 3d models that you found into a language that your printer is able to read in here, you'll be able to set parameters like height, speed, nozzle temperature, bed temperature, and just how your printer will work throughout the print. If this sounds complicated, don't worry. Most softwares, or really all softwares, have pre-configured profiles set for all of the printer settings. So what this basically means is once you download the slicer and throw in a 3D model, all the settings will already be done for you and anything you want to change will kind of be on your accord and you're really just going to have to go in yourself and change it. So everything just comes with stock settings, if you will, to just produce the most average print and you can change it after if you want a more high quality print or if you want to just print something in a different way. Guys, before buying your first 3D printer, it's just important to know whether or not your slicing software will actually be compatible with the computer you are using. So for example, before I bought my first 3D printer, the Ender 3, I first downloaded the Ultimaker Curing Cura Slicer software onto my PC and just made sure everything worked. I tinkered around with it a little bit. I downloaded a few files from uh, free websites and sliced them before I even had the printer in hand just to make sure I was familiar with it and everything worked smoothly. So just keep that in mind before actually purchasing the printer. Moving on now, we're gonna go over the filament you guys will be using. Without filament, you won't be able to print anything. Filament is the material used by FDM printers like the one right here. And it comes in various types like ABS, PLA, PETG, etc. The list goes on. All these are just acronyms for a bunch of super long chemistry words, but all you need to know is that each one has their own properties. PLA is the most beginner friendly filament to use just because of its ease in use and its widespread use in the 3D printing community. PLA is definitely the most reliable filament you will use. As you guys can see here, this Iron Man helmet was printed out of PLA and it's pretty strong. If I were to drop this helmet right now, it wouldn't break, but Comparing it to a car in the car world, it's kind of like your Honda Accord. It's reliable, it'll work, but if you ram it with a Ford F-150, it's gonna break. So just keep that in mind. It's definitely not the strongest, but it's also not the weakest. Okay guys, now the last thing when getting started in 3D printing is to just know to maintain your 3D printer. Keeping your 3D printer in good shape is crucial for having good quality prints, especially at a consistent rate. Regularly check for loose screws, clean the print bed, and ensure the nozzle is free from any clogs. Routine maintenance will extend the life of your 3D printer and improve print quality over time. Now, this is where I would usually wrap up the video. However, this is something a lot of you guys won't want to hear, which is you will fail. 
3D printing is just one of those things where you don't get it the first try. It's a hobby that you learn by doing, and that's the best way to really learn anything. You're gonna fail, you're gonna mess up, you're gonna have failed prints, you're gonna think you did everything right, and then your print just fails. Trust me, it's happened to me probably thousands of times, no joke. You can watch every YouTube video there is out there on how to get the perfect 3D prints, fine tune all of your settings, and I guarantee you, you will still have a failed print. But guys, don't stress, this happens to everybody. There's a community of people out there who are willing to help you. If you do a quick Google search, I guarantee you, you'll be able to find the answer to the problem you're facing. There's thousands of YouTube videos out there that you can look at that will teach you about the issues you're having with your printer. It's something everybody runs into and just please don't stress. And if you ever do find yourself getting really stressed out over this hobby and you just can't seem to fix the problem, don't worry about it. Just take a step back, take a break, chill out. It's meant to be fun. Any issues you might have with your 3D printer or any questions you have, please leave a comment down below. We'll do our best to answer every single question. So that being said, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Please leave a like and I'll see you in the next one. Subscribe for my engineering content.